Thank you, ICS 2021 Melbourne, for allowing me to present a randomized control trial evaluating the Optilum drug coated balloon versus standard endoscopic management in recurrent anterior urethral strictures. Interim one year results from Robust 3 study. My name is Dr. Justin Chi. I have no affiliations to disclose. My registration for this meeting was sponsored by Labori Medical. In my previous presentation, we discussed the Optilum drug coated balloon. The Optilum DCB is a urethral dilatation balloon with paclitaxel coating, allowing for mechanical dilatation and precision local drug delivery to prevent stricture recurrence. The Robust 3 trial is a prospective multi center randomized controlled single blind trial to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the Optilum drug coated balloon against standard of care endoscopic management of recurrent anterior urethral strictures. The eligibility criteria for the trial is broader than robust one and includes all anterior urethral strictures, although most were bulbar, strictures less than or equal to three centimeters, international prostate symptom scores of greater than 10, voiding, maximum voiding flow rates of less than 15 mils per second, and at least two prior dilatations. The subjects were randomized two to one to Optilune to standard of care, stratified by the number of prior dilatations, less than five or greater than five, with the presence absence of prior pelvic irradiation to ensure balance in these subgroups. Study was single blind with subjects blinded through the six month endpoint. Subjects randomized to receive standard of care were able to cross over to receive the Optilune DCB if stricture recurrence was confirmed by recurrent symptoms and urethral lumen less than 12 French by urethrogram. Subjects receiving alternative therapy for their stricture were discontinued from standard follow-up and only followed for general health through five years. Follow-up includes symptom scores, Euroflow, physical exam, assessment of erectile function, IIEF, and assessment of adverse events since the last visit. Follow-up is complete through six months and is ongoing through one year, with approximately two-thirds of subjects evaluable through 12 months. The primary endpoint was measured at six months via flexible cystoscopy. Ongoing follow-up is planned for those treated with the Optilum DCB. A minimum of 126 subjects provided at least 90% power to show superiority of Optilum DCB to standard of care. 127 patients enrolled at 23 clinical sites in the United States and Canada, 79 Optilum DCB and 48 standard of care. Similar baseline characteristics in both arms with an average of 3.6 prior endoscopic treatments and an average stricture length of 1.7 centimeters. Seen here, the primary endpoint, which was anatomic success at six months, confirmed by the ability to pass a 16 flange flexible cystoscope through the treated area without prior repeat intervention. 74.6 or 50 of 67 of the optimum group were anatomic success compared to 11 of 41 or 26.8% in the standard of care group. Time to treatment of failure seen in this Kaplan Meier curve shows the large variation between the two groups. Kaplan Meier estimates of rate of freedom from repeat intervention through one year was significantly higher in the optimum group compared to control. And you can see how later in the study period the curves varied significantly. Immediate symptomatic improvement was seen in both groups, but by one year, the control group symptom scores returned to near baseline. Here, the curves are assessed in two ways, as observed and failure carried forward. Due to the high recurrence rates in the control arm with a large number of subjects receiving alternative therapy prior to the 12-month visit, dropping them out of standard follow-up, and leading to only 14 subjects providing IPSS scores 
at 12 months in the control arm as observed. Carrying forward the IPSS scores just prior to receiving additional treatment for these clinical failures, failure carried forward group, gives us a better estimation of the symptomatic deterioration in the control group through the full 12 months. Using this method, the IPSS scores for the control group return to near baseline levels while the optulum group remains relatively unchanged compared to the as observed. Similar findings were, found, were seen in functional improvement of maximum flow rate. Both groups had immediate improvement, but by one year, the control group returns to near baseline with the optulum group maintaining its improvement. Finally, in terms of safety, this, the primary safety endpoint was freedom from a composite of three severe adverse events at three months. The formation of a urethral fistula, de novo stress urinary incontinence not resolved by three months, and urethral rupture or burst. No subjects experienced a primary safety endpoint event. Adver adverse events rates were similar between arms with the exception of a trend towards more mild post-procedural dysuria and hematuria in the optulum arm, which generally resolved by 30 days. In conclusion, the optulum drug-coated balloon exhibited a significant improvement in both objective and subjective outcomes through one year post-treatment compared to standard of care and represents a potential breakthrough in the endoscopic management of recurrent anterior urethral strictures. Follow-up through five years is planned to further define the durability of the treatment. Thank you.